Chapter 151, Preparation, 2, With India now under control, all the avatars now were united under one team, and with Argos, Wu Jin believed that the world had taken a step forward towards success. However, when Thoth and Merlin came and spoke to him, Wu Jin realized he was wrong. Three months? Yes, we can only see up to three months. Thoth and Merlin both knew how to read the future. Wu Jin frowned. It got lessened. Yes, I know you did the best you can, but we are running out of time. The others next to Wu Jin all became shocked as well. Sun Wakong commented, three months doesn't sound great. He then turned to Arthur. What are you going to do? I will fight to the end. Sun Wakong then turned to Zeus. If the world will came to an end, I will just enjoy my time with women until then. Wu Jin stared coldly at Zeus and he replied, The only one you need me to handle among the demons is Val, but you have enough manpower for that. Zeus laid back on the couch as he spoke. I will join the fight against Meter Ul, so just tell me any time. It's not like you can come right away if we tell you. And don't you know what might happen if you get eaten up by Meter Ul? Sun Wakong frowned but Zeus laughed. I'll be at Ra's palace. Don't worry, I wanted to go to Egypt at least once. HMPH, I guess we can't hold you here then. Go. Thanks. Zeus then got up and spoke. Well, we have three months, so good luck. Zeus left and Wu Jin sighed. There were still ones with such power but who were not keen on helping others. Wu Jin shook his head and looked at Sun Wakong. Mr. Sunday, can I ask you a favor? Sun Wakong nodded. I need sacred power. Sacred power? Here? Sun Wakong scoffed. Nobody will be able to withstand it if you use it here. I know. The avatars frowned. They all looked at each other as they knew what Wu Jin meant. Sun Wakong frowned and looked back at Wu Jin. Don't you mind if it kills you? If that is what it takes to win this, yes, you don't even have godliness within you. It won't be easy. I am working on it. If we succeed. I will have enough power even for a brief moment. I see. So, Sun Wakong asked back and Wu Jin calmly said, If we don't stand a chance in the fight with Meter Ul, I want you to bring down yourself to fight as well. HMPH, you know I might die while doing that? Yes, that's why I didn't speak of this when Zeus was here. Sun Wakong laughed. I know what you are talking about. But it isn't easy. I will need a lot of preparations for that tool. I will get it ready if you tell me what you need. Sun Wakong laughed. Ha ha, you're giving me no choice. As Sun Wakong began to think, Arthur declared, I am not as powerful as he, but I will prepare for it. Sun Wakong laughed bitterly. We are talking about a fight for the world. I was ready for it too. But I don't want only us doing that. So let's get Ra and Zeus preparation done too. They might not want it. There is a way to force them. Don't worry. Sun Wakong then looked out to the window and spoke. It's best if we don't even do this at all. Find Meter all before we need to do that. I am doing my best. With Thoth and Merlin, they began studying the body of Meter all. They were trying all possible methods and magics they knew. While Ryota was making a figure next to them, it was a figure of a Mikami as he knew it would be needed later on. That's when a message came. Person has moved out from the location. Ryota returned to his seat and checked on Argos. Person's location matches the location of Bravo team. Can't you find him there? Is it a dummy? We have a trace. But we can't find person here. Ryota frowned and looked at the screen when another report came in. This is Team Delta. We cannot locate Murmur. Ryota frowned. He's not there either? Negative. No Murmur. Ryota frowned. He then turned to the monk. This is not good. What's going on? They have found a way to escape Argos Trace. How is that possible? The monk began to check his sacred objects as Thoth came over to them. Demons will not just sit around and do nothing. Merlin also suggested an idea. They left a trace of themselves as a decoy. We will need to find the barrier where they are hiding under. Merlin spoke as he created a small barrier. If it is a barrier to interfere with the tracing of the spiritual power of demons, this one might be it. I have studied their magics once, 
so I know. Yoda bit his lip, creating a system to scan a barrier like this was an entirely new job. Yoda began to start working and Merlin looked at Voth and Monk of the Golden Wheel and spoke. But this is amazing, science and magic combined. I didn't know you study demonic magics. The monk asked and Merlin smiled. Oh, I've had to study them so I can deal with them. After getting the call. Wujin and Mayo went over to Ryota. How long will he need? Wujin asked the monk. He glanced at Ryota's back. It has been six hours since he began working like that. We might have something soon. Wujin nodded. Merlin then went over to Mayo. I heard you are like the archenemy of Bal. It was through her power that Wujin was able to defeat Bal. Mayo smiled. I had to finish him then. I heard Seer took him with her. Yeah. I don't know how she did it. Mayo was the fastest avatar on Wujin's team, yet Seer was much faster than her. Merlin nodded. There are two ways to catch her. Two ways? Merlin spoke. First is to make a trap and get her, and another is to catch up to her. The one who can do the latter, although he is weak, is Hermes. Hermes? He didn't join our fight. Merlin nodded. He rarely joins in a fight. He's not good at fighting. If you get help from him. You will be able to get Seer. Mayo turned to Wujin. They were using Argos to find demons, but they now needed to go meet with Hermes, who killed Argos in mythology. Let's go meet him. Chapter 152 Egypt in Danger 1. Bal looked at the demons that Seer saved. Idiots, he spat. There were only seven surviving demons now. Bal took them to Meter Ul as they now had to follow Meter Ul's orders. Meter Ul looked at each demon and asked, Do we really need them? They will help you during your reign later. Meter Ul thought it was better for him to eat them, since all he needed was just one follower. It seemed like eating them would also allow him to hunt the other avatars. However, that wasn't necessary for the time being. He decided to save them for later. Meter Ul turned to Bal. I will need more people then. How many do you need? About 10,000. That's too much. Meter Ul did not respond. With that number, he was going to get enough power back to attack. Bal frowned. He couldn't get 10,000 people without being noticed. I can do it if I use these demons but they will be put in danger. What do you say? Meter Ul grinned. Let's do it slowly. We can't let them notice us now. Meter Ul was in no hurry. He then turned to Sierra with an idea. I will shorten the time we need if you help me. It was hard to find Hermes, but with Zeus's help, they were able to get to him. He was wearing a baseball cap sitting down on a couch inside a club. Wujin waved and loud music went off. Hermes frowned. We can talk with the music on. Hermes, we need your help. My help? Yes. Hermes sighed and emptied his glass before continuing to speak. I can't fight. I know. We will do the fighting. You just need to help us get Seer. Seer. Hermes then let out a long slow sigh. I am faster before she takes the seventh step. But after that, I can't. She becomes faster as she keeps moving. Then we will get her location and you need to get her within seven steps. Hermes didn't seem like he was eager to do it. I don't want to fight. I don't like fighting. Wujin looked at Hermes and solemnly said, If we don't find Meter Ul's place from Seer, it will not matter whether you like fighting or not. I did hear rumors about this Meter Ul. Is he really that dangerous? Yes. Hermes then realized he had no choice in this and got up. Okay, but I will only help with catching Seer. That will be enough. The only way the opposing side could now run was with Seer. So if she was caught, then there was no need to worry. Where should I go? You have to go to Korea. Hermes then reached out to Wujin and Mayo. As soon as they held hands. Wujin realized why Hermes was the only one who could catch Seer. As he moved, the area around them turned. It was hard to believe that a being could be so fast. Hermes spoke as he walked. You might consider me fast, but after her seventh step, Seer is much faster than this. Keep that in mind. Hermes was moving through the folded space, but if Seer was faster than this, it explained why Wujin or Mayo couldn't get to her. And after a few seconds, they were in Korea. Wujin told Hermes how to get to the lab and there, Sun Wakong greeted them. You got him. Wujin smiled. Yes, but he won't fight. He'll only help to find Seer. Hey, you want a pipe? Long time no see. 
Hermes came up to him and Sun Wukong handed him a small pipe. It's a new recipe. It's really good. Hermes seemed to be old friends with Sun Wukong. He took a puff on the pipe and coughed. Ugh, this is too poisonous. Bah, you got weak. Sun Wukong spat as Hermes laughed. You never change. Huh? Of course. Wu Jin then went to visit her Yoda. They were still studying how to find Meter All. There were multiple coffee mugs on her Yoda's table, which showed he had already spent a few days researching. Wu Jin spoke to her Yoda. I brought Hermes. Oh, I thought you might not bring him. Well, our world depends on it. But we still need you to finish your work. Yeah. Her Yoda smiled bitterly. I am having a bit of a problem, but it will be solved soon. Just wait. Wu Jin then went to Dr. An. The doctor didn't seem much different from Ryota either. Didn't you sleep? No time for that. Look at this. It seemed like Dr. An had been waiting for Wu Jin. He showed Wu Jin a syringe full of blue liquid. What is this? I checked how your cells react to it, and it doesn't seem to be dangerous. You want to try? It's not dangerous. But you won't tell me what happens if I use it? It was hard enough to make something that will work on you. I'll have to take a look so I can move on to the next step. Wu Jin looked at the syringe that Dr. An first allowed Wu Jin to obtain his sacred power, then nodded. Dr. An injected it into his arm. Oh, lay down here. Wu Jin got on the bed and Dr. An placed a few machines over him. That's when Wu Jin's spiritual stone began reacting. The spiritual power that flowed inside him began to burn. Wu Jin focused on it. What was it and why was it giving him such pain? Wu Jin focused the power to his hand and the burning spiritual power popped out of his hand. It was sacred power. However, it quickly disappeared. Ugh! Wu Jin panted and Dr. An asked. How is it? There is a reaction, but only the spiritual power within me seems to turn into it. I think it is sacred power, but I'm not certain. How painful is it? It feels like blood is burning through my veins. Dr. Ann smiled bitterly. Can you make it work now? It won't be easy, but I can probably work something out. But the pain won't go away, so I have to endure the pain? Yes, I can put some sedatives in if it's too painful. But that will make it take too long. Wu Jin sighed. Let's focus on making something we can actually utilize. And if we have room, then please see if you can lessen the pain. Will do. Chapter 153, Egypt in Danger. 2. Ra's hotel in Egypt had undergone a drastic change after Zeus arrived. He was having the time of his life enjoying party after party with famous DJs and a countless number of beautiful women. As Zeus was enjoying his nth party, two women appeared on the rooftop of a building across from him. It's a feast. Meter all was able to arrive in Egypt in a few seconds with the help of Seer, however, he had opted to retain a female form. Val had changed the barrier so that it would follow them. Meter Al looked down at the hotel. He wanted to go down and eat all of them, but he couldn't waste time. He was here to eat only those he needed. Meter Al looked at Zeus. There were other avatars, but he was the most tempting one here. Eating just Zeus alone was going to give him the same effect as eating three demons. Let's get him and return. Will it work? Of course. Meter Al readied herself on the roof. Let's make this quick. He then jumped out. Seer sighed. She had heard Meter Al was strong, but the place was littered with avatars, especially with Ra and Zeus. Meter Al dropped into the pool and the water inside all splashed out. The women there seemed to be excited at some sort of event. But Zeus immediately became tense after sensing the energy coming from the strange woman. Who could it be that Zeus could not sense its power, and could jump down into the pool and empty it? Zeus got up and shouted, everyone get away. The women started screaming as they ran but Meter all quickly charged at Zeus. Raw, Zeus shouted and swung Vedra. A powerful lightning bolt was shot at the woman. But she reached out and absorbed it. Zeus was able to confirm who he was up against. Meter all. Before Zeus could finish, Meter all swung his fist and Zeus stepped back quickly. Meter all's attack erased the entire place where Zeus had been sitting earlier. It was as if the entire space had turned into a void. Zeus threw a series of lightning bolts, but Meter all waved his hand. 
erasing them easily. Zeus frowned. His most powerful attack was nullified with the wave of an arm. That's when Ra appeared with a light aura surrounding him. Countless other avatars also appeared and circled Meter Ul. Zeus didn't shift his attention away from Meter Ul and asked, did you call them? Yes. Then we just need to buy some time. Meter Al laughed. Buy some time? Meter Al didn't only come for Zeus, he needed Zeus and Ra. And yet now both of them were in one place. Meter Al charged in and Zeus threw his lightning. But Meter Al erased it again. Ra then reached out and a high temperature light beam flew in at Meter Al. He dodged it and Zeus realized that Meter Al couldn't use the erasing power multiple times. They had a chance. Zeus threw his lightning and Meter Al erased it again. However, Ra attacked at the same time. Meter Al scoffed as he reached out and erased the light again. And when Zeus readied to throw his attack again, Meter Al was already there and grabbed his hand. I got ya. Ra threw the light, but Meter Al used Zeus to defend. Zeus screamed as Meter Al placed his hand on Zeus' chest. And before the attack sent by Ra arrived, Zeus's body was absorbed by Meter Al. However, Meter Al did not change. The new power was in his hands, but he couldn't stay still to digest it and let Ra attack him. So Meter Al did not absorb the power yet and dodged Ra's attack. Ra shouted, get away. When the avatars scattered in multiple directions, powerful light was unleashed from Ra's body. It was as if he had turned himself into the sun. This was his ultimate defense mechanism. Meter Al realized he couldn't erase it constantly, so he threw his fist out. Powerful energy that clashed against it and Meter Al rushed in. Meter Al's fist struck against Ra's stomach as Ra reached out and grabbed Meter Al's arm. He was still in his woman body form as his arm burned up, but he didn't even flinch and absorb Ra. Was it because he was too full? Meter Al didn't feel like eating any of the other avatars and waved. Seer who was watching from a distance began taking steps and soon disappeared with Meter Al. The avatars who were left behind were dumbfounded. Zeus and Ra had been eaten in a matter of minutes. Soon after, a group of avatars appeared. They shouted as they arrived, Where's Meter Al? Sun Wakong shouted and Wu Jin left the panting Hermes and looked at Nam. What happened? I heard Meter Al appeared. Nam answered, He disappeared with Seer. And where's Zeus and Ra? They were eaten, eaten alive. This was terrible. Wu Jin grimaced. Zeus and Ra were two of the most powerful avatars on their side. Wu Jin had lost a third of his best teammates, and now Meter Al probably had gotten much more powerful. Arthur came up to him. Are we still not ready to track Meter Al? Wu Jin shook his head. They didn't have a method to find the barrier of the demons either. I think the demons have changed barriers. It is surprising we couldn't find them while they were on the move either. Sun Wakong sighed. I don't know what to do now. His plan was to get Zeus and Ra to bring forth their originals, but that plan had sunk now. As he talked to Sun Wakong, Ko Un So ran out of the hotel. Wu Jin then remembered that his sister was here. Wu Jin, he was shocked by the fact that he had forgotten and thought that Un So was in the safest place in the world. But it turned out she wasn't. Wu Jin patted her on her back. Pack up. Let's go back to Korea. Are we going back? Yeah. Korea is safer than here now. Chapter 154, Unexpected Offer. 1. On the way back to Korea with his family in the jet. Wu Jin sat inside the meeting room. Sun Wakong didn't look well either. Wu Jin's face showed that he was full of concerns. Sun Wakong sighed. It's apparent that we need to fight Meter Al with our original powers. I thought that required preparations. I will ask the avatars who can wield sacred powers if they are willing to help. Wu Jin then asked with curiosity, Is there a limit to using sacred power? No. Once you are prepared. There is no limit. But such power can leave traces in this world. Can we make a barrier to block the effects from getting out? That won't be easy. But we should try. They needed to do everything they could. So, how far have you proceeded with your plan? It is in progress. I can use sacred power temporarily, but it is painful. You can use sacred power? Yes. Sun Wakong looked at Wu Jin in shock. He figured Wu Jin would not be able to wield such power. But it seemed that he was wrong. Ha ha, you always surprise me. Or is it Dr. An who is doing that? Yes, he is really amazing. It was all thanks to Dr. An that Wu Jin was now working to save the world. Even if he returned, 
If he was only a mere hunter, he would not have been able to sit with these avatars to discuss saving the world. Can any avatar use it? Wu Jin shook his head. For now, we are working on something that will only work on me. I see, but it is good to hear that it's working. Wu Jin then talked about what happened. It looks like Meter Ul will need time to absorb the power of Zeus and Ra. Yes, if that wasn't necessary, he would not have run. Arthur also agreed. At least we have some time then. That is hard to say as we will now have to deal with an even stronger Meter Ul. Mayo then sighed and asked. Is there a way I can get sacred power too? You are not a god, so you can't, Sun Wukong replied. Avatars that were not gods had no such right. Mayo was already one of the most powerful avatars, but she wanted more power to be able to fight Meter all. I know how you feel, but don't be reckless. I don't want him to go through that either. I just can't because he's ready to take whatever's necessary. Wakong talked about Wu Jin and Wu Jin also spoke up. Don't worry, you are already a huge help. But I'm worried. Wu Jin was worried too, but he didn't mention it. After the meeting, Wu Jin went over to his family's room. His father first asked, is Korea safe? For now, they weren't all that ready. If Meter Ul appeared, it would be dangerous. But it was still safer than other places. At least it's great to see you. They all felt the thunder and lightning flash outside the hotel. Although it ended quickly, it was hard to describe the shock they felt. Wu Jin smiled. It will be okay. Get some rest. Wu Jin's mother then reached out to him and asked, Son, do you really need to fight in the middle of that? Wu Jin smiled brightly. Yes, they need me. Meter Ul was beyond happy after returning to the castle. But he needed time to absorb such great power. He met with Bao before going into seclusion to digest. Where have you been? I ate Zeus and Ra. Bao flinched. Zeus and Ra were powerful avatars that Bao himself couldn't defeat. They won't make any bold moves since part of their main force has been killed. In the meantime, I need to digest what I ate. Digest? Yes, their power is too great, so I will need time to digest it. Meter Ul didn't realize that this would happen, but it was now apparent that he would need time to absorb their power in case they fight such powerful targets. So, I'll take time to digest. They won't make any moves anyway. How long do you need? I don't know. About two weeks? And I can't interrupt you in the meantime. I will lose my consciousness while digesting, so I might eat you if you come near me in the process. I will be aware. Meter Ul then went down to the basement of the castle and created a barrier inside a room. If he were to fail while digesting, it would weaken him considerably. After creating the barrier, he crouched down and closed his eyes. His clothes then ripped apart and a thread-like substance materialized and encased him in it. Meter Ul smiled. Soon, I will be able to eat this entire world. Bal didn't go near Meter Ul as warned, but knew that he had created a barrier. Bal asked Seer, how was he? Zeus and Ra were absorbed right away. He has the power to erase an attack with a wave of his arm and has the power to eat anything. Seer sighed and Bal asked again. Then we won't be much safer with him either. What do you think if we fight her? We'll lose right away. Yes, that seems likely. Val had now realized that Meter Ul's power was way beyond them. Was it okay to follow him to the end when he could turn his back on them at any time? Two weeks. If he absorbs Zeus and Ra's power, he will become more powerful than any avatar. That was why it was more concerning to him especially because of what Meter Ul said when Bal gathered the remaining demons. Seer, don't let anyone come here. Okay. Bal then left alone and looked at the barrier Meter Ul had created. He had two weeks. Bal then silently returned to his room and created a barrier around himself before dialing a number. A voice answered, Who is it? I need to get into contact with someone. Chapter 155 Unexpected Offer Two, Wu Jin had to help Dr. An's research by his side, or more specifically, be his test subject. And while doing that, everyone gathered at Old Huang's call. The voice coming through the speakerphone was familiar. It's me, Bao. What is it? Wu Jin answered. I have an offer to make. Go on. I will tell you the location of Meter Ul if you promise our safety. It won't take us long to locate Meter Ul anyway. You don't have much time. If Meter Ul digests Zeus and Ra, 
none of you will be enough to handle him. Wu Jin had the same concern. He looked around, and Sun Wukong nodded as he stated, There aren't many demons left anyway. It will be better if we allow them to live and find Meter all. Wu Jin nodded. With Amon gone and the avatars all united, there was no risk for the demons to call upon Meter all again anyway. Fine. I will allow it. Give us Meter Ull's location. I can't trust your word. I want at least one of you to swear an oath under your sacred name. Sun Wukong quickly spoke up. I, Sun Wukong the Monkey King, swear an oath for the safety of your demon kind. Good. Meter Ull is in my castle. I will send the coordinates. He said it will take two weeks to fully digest Zeus and Ra's power. He also declared that he will eat anyone who interferes with the process. I guess he can't digest it all properly if someone interferes. Yes. So if you want to get him, now is the best time. Good. We will allow you to live, but you demons can't stay there. Yes. I will make preparations on my side. I'll send the coordinates first. Wu Jin hung up and looked at Sun Wukong. This was unexpected. Can we trust them? It should be okay. I hope it's not a trap. Sun Wukong cackled. Even if it was, there is a limit to how far they can go. We can handle it. Wu Jin nodded. If we are going to fight Meter Ul, we will need our sacred powers. Zeus and Ra were killed even before we got there. So Meter Ul is far more powerful than we thought he was. Yes, we have to be quick. Sun Wukong then turned to Arthur. How long will it take to prepare our own? Three days should be enough. HMPH. He then turned to Wu Jin. And you? I don't know. I'm doing my best to shorten the time. Sun Wukong clapped and said, with Zeus and Ra gone. We have to be ready for anything. We'll leave in three days to create a barrier over the entire castle and fight him on the fifth day. You stay back with Hermes and come when we're ready. Even if you are not ready by then, just come. Okay, everyone, let's get down to business. Also, tell the US and Russia the coordinates too, so they can nuke the place at least if all else fails. Okay. Wu Jin then went to visit Dr. An. He already had few test syringes ready. I have some tests ready for you. Let's try them out. I have something to tell you first. What is it? Thal told us the location of Meter All. We are going on a full all-out attack in five days. Dr. An laughed. So I have five days to give you access to the sacred power? Yes. Dr. An asked, can I get more time? No. Wu Jin smiled. Then... I have no choice. You will have to stay with me the entire time. I was going to do that anyway. Good. Let's not waste more time then. With Meter Ull's location, the leaders of the world asked if they could just launch the nukes, but Sun Wukong stopped them. Nuking wasn't a proven method to kill him and if it failed, the outcome would be more terrifying. The Monk of the Golden Wheel, Thoth and Merlin were assigned to create a new barrier to withstand the sacred power. The size of the barrier was to be about the size of a large city. Everyone was busy preparing to fight Meter all. Three days later, Arthur, Amakami, Himasu, and Sun Wukong gathered. Poseidon also came to fight in place of Zeus. These five avatars were those who were ready to call their originals upon themselves to fight. And while all that was going on, Wu Jin and Dr. An were doing their best. Now, Wu Jin was able to transfer part of his spiritual power inside his spiritual stone and change it into sacred power. Wu Jin got up from the bed after going through another test. Is it possible? I see what the spiritual stone reacts to now. The next will be our final one. Dr. An looked at Wu Jin with bloodshot eyes. But we can't test this. If it was going to change the entire spiritual stone into a sacred stone, it would give Wu Jin the power of a god, but at the risk of his life. Even now, changing spiritual power into sacred power was enough to destroy a part of his body. And I can't be 100% sure it will work. I know. Wu Jin smiled, but it's over 80%, right? Yeah. Wu Jin replied, that's enough. It was about a human becoming a god. 80% was more than enough. I'm counting on you doctor. Go get some rest. Wu Jin nodded and left the lab. Mayo came up to him. Didn't you go with Mr. Sun? I can't bring down my original, so there's no need for me to go line up. I see. Is it that bad? I wish I could say it was nothing. Mayo reached up and touched Wu Jin's cheek. It was sullen. Mayo sighed. If you use sacred power, it will destroy you. You know that, 
right? Of course, and you are still going to use it? There is no other way. Mayo looked at Wu Jin silently and then hugged him. Wu Jin responded in kind. If everyone calls forth their original and the fighting starts, get out of the barrier. Mayo laughed. The barrier won't be that vulnerable. You never know what might happen. Mayo had a way to get out of the battle through her power to move over the realm. Mayo looked up to Wu Jin. You won't even let me look? Even when the world will end if we lose? Yeah, please. I want you to escape at least. Mayo then nodded slowly. Okay. Then, don't die and win. Wu Jin wanted that more than anyone else. He had no death wish. But he had to be ready to defeat Meter all. We will win without me having to use sacred power. I hope so too. Chapter 156 The Final Battle 1. Wu Jin took the syringe that Dr. An had completed. The doctor patted Wu Jin's shoulder. Then, this is it. Wu Jin hugged Dr. An. There were no words that could describe his gratitude for everything Dr. An had done for him. Thank you. I was able to finish my avatar project because of you. No need to thank me. I hope you will be happy. It's up to you now. Wu Jin smiled as Dr. An took out another syringe. And this. This is just in case. What is this? If you kill him after you use your sacred power. Inject this into your heart. Wu Jin looked at the syringe and Dr. An explained with a smile. I have not tested it, but it is an antidote. It might return you back to being an avatar. Is that possible? The chance of success is slim, but it's better than nothing. Today was the fifth day. Wu Jin stored away the two syringes in his pocket and Dr. An said, Today might be the last day. If they killed Meter all, they would have more time, but if not, today would be the end of their lives. Then, you must use your last one. I will. Wu Jin bowed and went to Hermes and Mayo. Then, they held hands and left. As soon as they disappeared, Dr. An finally fell. He held on with his avatar mind to finish the project. However, a person quickly came up to him and supported him from falling. Brunhilde smiled. Is today the last? I believe it will not be the last. I believe so too. So get some rest. I will be there for you when you wake up. With that. Dr. Anne passed out and Brunhilde took him inside. Wu Jin got to the Great Barrier, gathered there were Bal and his demons, the Monk of the Golden Wheel, Thoth, Merlin, and the others. Only Bal could get inside the barrier among all these people. Bal turned to Wu Jin and Mayo. You are here. I have to finish him. I heard you put your life in danger for this. Wu Jin nodded and Bal sighed. A fake avatar doesn't stand a chance. Wu Jin laughed. Yeah. But did you forget I almost got you? That was because of her. Yeah, and it was me who helped her get ten tails. My own nodded and Bao laughed. Okay, I won't say any more. It is your life, not mine. Sure. Wu Jin then turned to the barrier as Bao warned him. Don't let Meter all end this world. Yeah. After Wu Jin finished talking with Bao, Monk came up to him. Are you ready? How's the inside? There are only five avatars inside the barrier. With you too. There will be seven. There were only seven of them, but they were the most powerful ones who could fight Meter all. Wu Jin turned to Mayo and declared, Then let's start. Merlin raised his staff and Thoth opened his book of wisdom. Both of them began mumbling their spells as Monk activated his power. The barrier opened up a path for a person to walk through and Wu Jin and Mayo walked in. Monk shouted from behind, We will open up the barrier after seven days. Good luck. Wu Jin nodded as the barrier closed. Wu Jin glanced around and found no one else. He then turned to Mayo. How much time do we have left? About an hour until we start. Then let's take a walk. Yeah. Wu Jin didn't feel like rushing into his last battle. He wanted to at least enjoy the little time he had left. The antidote. Can I carry it for you? Why? I think you will be in no place to use it if there is a need for it. Wu Jin smiled as he took out the antidote and gave it to Mayo. We have five gods coming down into this world. We should be okay. Yeah, at least they now knew about Meter Al's power. He could erase another power and absorb an entire space. It was easier than the Meter Al who could teleport. Wu Jin turned to Mayo. Don't jump in recklessly. You might die. Yeah, but I will do it if I need to. Despite Wu Jin's advice, Mayo was better at fighting than anyone else here and she was now strong enough to even fight Sun Wakong on equal footing. As they walked slowly, 
A shadow covered them and Wu Jin looked up. It was Sun Wukong on his cloud. Why are you so late? I'm not late. Bah, get up. Let's drink. Drink before we fight? Yeah. Wu Jin laughed and climbed onto the cloud with Mayo. He then brought them to where the avatars were. They had gathered at a hill overlooking the castle. When Wu Jin and Mayo got down from the cloud, Poseidon came up to them. Good to see you. I'm Poseidon. Nice to meet you. Ko Wu Jin. Poseidon was a muscular man who wielded a trident. He exchanged a handshake with Wu Jin and offered him a seat. Dionysus gave us the best liquor when I came here. Wu Jin laughed at the feast on the table. It wasn't just a drinking party. What's with all this? All the food that was laid out were those with such heavy spiritual powers that would kill a normal human. As Wu Jin ate them, he felt spiritual power filling him up inside. If he were to change this much energy into sacred power, he would be able to fight using godly power for at least five minutes. As Wu Jin was eating, Sun Wukong raised his glass. I never thought we would gather in one place. Even if we perish here, our names will be left as legends. Sun Wukong turned to Wu Jin. However, unlike us, he is a human who became an avatar and is now trying to become a god. Wu Jin? If you die here today, your name will be glorified above all the names in the sky. Wu Jin was shocked. If what Sun Wukong said really happened, he might be given godhood even if he died. Sun Wukong shouted, Our last drink, drink up, and we will become legends, legends. All the avatars emptied their glasses and the Jin Duyun cloud appeared. They got up and flew over to the castle. As they looked down, Sun Wukong looked at a Mikami and with her spiritual power, Sun Wukong enlarged his Ruai Bang. The staff that was now enlarged up to 100 meters struck downwards into the castle. Chapter 157 The Final Battle, 2 They didn't just attack once, they attacked multiple times, not allowing Meter Ul to get up. A Mikami then sent power to Poseidon and he threw down his trident. What followed his trident was a giant water wave. Even though he was on land, the torrent of water was powerful enough to sweep the entire castle to pieces. On top of that, Arthur raised his sword, Excalibur. The legendary sword shone brightly and the spiritual power from it shaped another giant sword illusion over it. The giant sword illusion dropped, destroying the castle. Wu Jin then raised his fist and delivered his spiritual power along with the power given by a Mikami into the glove of Bangu. His fist grew to 30 meters as he jumped down and struck the castle. The first powerful physical strike from Ruai Bang, the second water attack from Poseidon, the third spiritual power attack from Arthur, and the final physical strike from Wu Jin decimated the castle. When Wu Jin landed, he felt a change and shouted, Get back! Wu Jin hopped back as tentacles emerged from the dust clouds. All the tentacles missed their targets and returned. Wu Jin saw a ball-shaped object inside the dust. There was a total of six tentacles that extended out from it. The ball had cracks everywhere, meaning that Meter Ul had not fully digested Zeus and Ra's powers in their entirety. Meter Ul then emerged from the ball, wiped his distorted face and looked around. He then demanded in an annoyed tone, How did you find me? Meter Al looked around and added, And where is Bal? He told us your location and ran. He wants guaranteed safety. Meter Al burst into laughter. It seems like there's a giant barrier around this place. You would have needed at least a few days to do this. Yup. Then that means he betrayed me the moment I went into digestion. Meter Al laughed and looked up. Destroying this barrier would require a good chunk of time. Once he killed the enemies here then that would be no problem. The issue was that he couldn't digest Zeus and Ra yet. He had gotten more powerful than when he fought Zeus, but that wasn't enough. His enemies were prepared. Meter Ul then looked at Wu Jin. He was weaker than the others, but it seemed like he was the leader. He took a deep breath as he was going to use all the power he gained through this incomplete digestion. Let's do it then. Meter Ul shouted and placed his hand on the ground. A magical rune appeared around him and monsters jumped out. They were 10 meter tall, two-legged monsters. Wu Jin glanced at Meter Ul. He had just consumed a lot of power just to summon them. We have to kill them quickly and go after Meter Ul. It seems so. Sun Wukong created hundreds of clones of himself, 
all which attacked meter all at once. Wu Jin then drew on his spiritual power and focused on the monster charging at him. He dodged the blade-like arms and threw the fist of giant at the monster. When the monster was knocked back, Wu Jin swung his Kusanagi no Ken. The monster tried to block the attack with his power. But Wu Jin's wrist deftly moved the sword to avoid it and struck its chest. When blood started pouring out, Wu Jin felt a chill run down his back and jumped back. Meter All's tentacle struck down right where he was a second ago. Wu Jin turned to Meter All. He was the target that Meter All had decided to focus on. I think I just need to get you. Wu Jin smiled bitterly. He was worried about Amon ever since he returned back in time. He thought he could save Earth if he killed Amon. But he was wrong. Wu Jin looked at Meter All and compared himself. How powerful was he, compared to Zeus or Ra? Could he truly fight and win against Meter All when he was weaker than both of them? However, there was no time to ponder such thoughts. Meter All charged in, his six tentacles attacking from all directions, and Wu Jin swung his sword while jumping back. He wanted to kill Meter All, but he couldn't do it alone. With the spiritual power sent from Imakami, Wu Jin was able to hold his ground against the tentacle attacks. Meter All thought it would be easy, but Wu Jin was faring well in blocking his advances. As Meter All got closer, he reached out with his left hand which had the power to erase every attack. However, Wu Jin didn't use any type of special power. He realized it was his chance and threw his fist of giant. When he noticed the fist, Meter All switched to his right hand. Wu Jin realized it was the hand that ate everything and directed his fist down at the ground. The ground exploded, throwing Wu Jin up into the air. He then threw the bamboo spear at Meter All, but it was struck down by the tentacles. Wu Jin then kicked while in the air and charged at him. Meter All's tentacles came after him but Wu Jin swung his sword imbued with spiritual power and sliced the tentacles. U.G.H. Meter All frowned at the pain of his tentacles getting cut. Wu Jin swung his sword again and cut off three more tentacles. Meter All could regenerate, but that meant he would need to consume energy, so it was a good tactic for Wu Jin to buy some time. However, Wu Jin had also used much of his spiritual power. Meter All recalled his tentacles and pulled out a long blade in each hand. Wu Jin laughed. Meter All now was declaring that he would fight with swords. Wu Jin then took out Njolnir. He had already trained enough to use both Kusanagi no Ken and Njolnir. Meter All smiled. No matter who stood in my way. None of them were left. You will be no exception. Meter All charged and Wu Jin also charged in. As their weapons clashed. Wu Jin frowned, he tried to deflect and cut him down, but he couldn't. Meter All smiled. Do you think no one who knew how to use swords in my world? Meter All, after getting back enough of his memory, revealed that he was a talented swordsman. Chapter 158, The Final Battle, 3, As They Fought On, Meter All's memory became clearer and it was getting better. It was so long since he last fought in human form that he had forgotten. But the memories kept coming back to him and Meter All became excited. Wu Jin realized one thing while fighting him. Meter All was getting stronger. But it didn't mean that it was bad for Wu Jin since he was also getting stronger. As he fought, he now felt a strange sensation that every lesson he was taught until now was being condensed into one giant lesson. Meter All frowned as Wu Jin was becoming harder to deal with. The attacks from his sword and hammer were getting harder to read. He decided he had to end his enjoyment and kill his opponent. Meter Al then unleashed his power. He directly thrust his sword forward. Wu Jin sensed something dangerous and jumped back. The space where he was standing a second ago was gone. As he observed the area, Wu Jin was able to deduce the fact that Meter Al's power had a range of 10 meters. Wu Jin then threw Mjolnir at Meter Al and when he struck it down, Wu Jin charged in while swinging his sword. The energy wave left a long cut on Meter All's cheek. Wu Jin now was stronger than even Zeus or Ra. Meter All smiled ominously. This is getting fun. It was Mayo who killed the monster first. She thought the monster had no way to attack her in other realms. But when she shot through the monster and pulled out the heart, it created a barb that attacked her the moment she came over. It wounded her and it did not regenerate easily. But Mayo had to work quickly to help protect Amakami. Amakami asked, Are you okay? Not really. Meter All's energy that lingered inside her made her feel as if she would fall. 
but she couldn't let Omokami down. She was worried about Wu Jin who was fighting Meter all. That's when another monster was killed and Himasu appeared. Mayo went over to heal Himasu and asked, what happened? Himasu had taken heavy damage to his left flank, which had been cut open, began to visibly heal and he said, go, I'll protect her. Okay. Mayo then ran toward Wu Jin. Meter all became serious as he felt the monsters being killed. That was not much of an issue, but the main problem was that he couldn't still get Wu Jin. He could not digest these avatars immediately. That's why he went after Wu Jin first. But fighting Wu Jin was getting harder. It was so long since he felt such a feeling. He didn't start as a great being in his world. He only reached this point after slowly eating one avatar after another. Meter Al charged at Wu Jin while unleashing his powers. Wu Jin had to jump back and Meter Al then charged at Himasu. When he was charging in toward Himasu, Mayo charged in from another direction. Meter Al then noticed his power inside Mayo and snapped his fingers. Kai at Mayo screamed and stopped as Meter Al's sword moved to strike her. Wu Jin ran to help her, but Mayo had already shifted to another realm and the attack went past her. Meter Al knew she would not be able to counterattack and charged at Himasu. Even if he could not immediately digest Himasu, he could at least gain 10% right away and that was probably enough to take care of Wu Jin. Himasu, however, smiled coldly. Meter all threw herself to the side to dodge the giant Ruai Bang. Sun Wakong stood in front of him and scoffed. You are weaker than expected. Did the unfinished digestion make you sick? Sun Wakong then added. Let's finish it here. Meter all reached out and all of Sun Wakong's clones disappeared. He then charged at Sun Wakong and Himasu turned to Wu Jin. After meeting Wu Jin's eyes, Himasu took out a gem from his pocket and closed his eyes. The gem cracked and a light beamed on Himasu. Meter all shuddered as he saw the light coming down on Himasu. It seemed that he had no chance of winning at this rate. Meter all decided to take this seriously and the light disappeared around Himasu. He stood there with a crown made from crow feathers with his sword on his waist. He also had recovered his arm. A sacred power was unleashed from him and Sun Wakong stepped back. Hey, why did you do that? I think it was necessary. Really? Doesn't seem so. Himasu shook his head. He couldn't maintain his avatar body any longer and had to retreat from battle. Until then, he was going to do his best to fight. Himasu walked up as Meter Al smiled. Sacred power was different from spiritual power. It was a power that he could absorb entirely. When Meter Al charged, Himasu swung his sword. The sword shone brightly and Meter Al reached out. That's when Wu Jin charged towards Meter Al from the back but he just smiled and reached out with his left hand. The shining energy wave sent out by Himasu's sword was absorbed into Meter Al. With the power absorbed, Meter All began to unleash the terrifying energy. Meter All shot up into the air as Himasu realized his attack did not work at all. Then, Meter All looked down at Wu Jin from the sky. A new third eye opened on his forehead and Wu Jin trembled. That was the eye from Meter All's original body. It had now opened. Chapter 159, Acquires Godliness. 1. Wu Jin realized Terat Meter Al now had access to a portion of his original power and how terrifying that was. Wu Jin spoke quickly. The sacred power seems to just increase his power, but we can't defeat him with just spiritual power. You felt that too? But we can't use sacred power against him. He can eat it, but our power differs too greatly from just an avatar and our real selves. Sun Wakong looked up to Meter Al. That power was too strong to deal with. Wu Jin then took out his syringe as the others all held their gems. Mayo couldn't do anything but look at them. Wu Jin turned to her. Leave the barrier as you promised. But, you are the only one who can save me. His only hope to be saved was now the antidote that Mayo had. Mayo bit her lip and answered. Okay. Mayo left and Wu Jin turned back to meet her all. With the third eye opened. Meter All was now gaining power even without eating anything. Without any hesitation, Wu Jin injected the syringe into his neck as Sun Wakong, Arthur, Poseidon, and Imakami all broke their gems. Lights all beamed down on them and Meter All shuddered. He knew that they would gain their sacred powers. It was the purest power in the world.
that didn't make him sick or need time to digest, they were digging their own graves, ha 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 ha. Come, Meter all shouted as he looked down at the six gods, Sun Wakong asked, what should we do? Wu Jin felt his spiritual stone changing while in terrible pain. All his spiritual power was now changing into sacred power. He then understood what power he had wielded. The power he had gotten was the same power as Shiva, the power to destroy everything. However, Wu Jin also knew that any power could be absorbed by Meter All. We will need to damage him physically. So you should start. Alright. Sun Wakong enlarged his Ruai Bang. It had already been unlocked from its seal. Sun Wakong shot up with his cloud and Wu Jin turned to the others. Let's focus on physical attacks first. Sure. Himasu then shot up as Imakami spoke. I will help. She could only help three at most with her avatar body. But now it was different. She had the power to send her power everywhere as long as it was under the sunlight. Sun Wakong shone brightly with a Mikami's power and swung his staff. Meter Al reached up and grabbed Drew Ai Bang. However, Meter Al's physical power didn't grow all that powerful and he was thrown. His arm was crushed but it didn't matter. It quickly regenerated. He won't die easily. Meter Al realized what his enemies were thinking. It was a decent plan. But this meant he could fight more easily. When Hemus's sword struck down, Meter Al jumped and changed. His body turned scrawny and became much quicker. Poseidon swung his trident but Meter Al dodged it and closed in on Poseidon. He then unleashed his power as Wu Jin quickly grabbed Poseidon and pulled, but the space was absorbed taking Poseidon's arm with it. Meter Al's body began to change again with the power of Poseidon, the body that had changed for speed now that he gained muscles. He also regained his tentacles. Wu Jin frowned and stood up front. I can read his power since I fought him. I'll take the lead. All right. They couldn't bear getting attacked by Meter Al as it would make him stronger. Meter Al grinned. His tentacles swung and came after Wu Jin and he swung his sword. The tentacles were fast. But Wu Jin was now also on a whole new level. He swung his sword while wielding the destructive sacred power against the tentacles to see if they could absorb the sacred power. However, they were cut down with ease. Meter Al also seemed to be shocked that they were cut down so easily. Yet, it didn't damage him much. Meter Al charged and threw his fist at Wu Jin as he dodged it. He threw Mjolnir at him. It didn't contain any sacred power. Meter Al couldn't finish his attack as he would get struck by it. He tilted his head to dodge but Wu Jin's sword cut down. Blood splattered and Meter Al staggered back. Wu Jin's sword was faster than he thought and when he retreated, Ruai Bang struck down. He dodged it as Hemus's sword came after his neck. Meter Al's tentacle moved to intercept. He was able to catch up to the speed of all the others except Wu Jin. Meter Al decided to fight Wu Jin by himself and let his tentacles deal with the rest. As he charged towards Wu Jin, they were now stronger and more accurate. Wu Jin felt danger among the attacks coming. Hemasu, be careful. Hemasu was attacking from the closest range so it was too late. The area disappeared and Hemasu's left arm was gone too. It healed Meter Al's wounds and tentacles and the third eye grew larger. It was now large enough to reach down to the nose. It looked as if it was trying to come out of its human form. His power now had also gotten much greater. The headache with dealing with him was the power to absorb an area. The only person who could see through it was Wu Jin. But he couldn't deal Meter Al alone anymore. When Mjolnir returned to him, he charged at Meter Al and shouted, I'll take him on. Wu Jin knew his time to use sacred power was much less than the others. He already felt his body screaming in pain. He only had three minutes at most, so he had to finish Meter Al before that. Wu Jin attacked, quickly slashing his sword multiple times at Meter Al, but he was able to avoid all of them. Only Sun Wakong who could attack from range, was helping. As they exchanged attacks, Wu Jin heard Granny Mago's voice. This is a first. Granny Mago continued before Wu Jin could ask. I have a message from Shiva. He's asking if you are willing to take in his entire power. Wu Jin asked as he dodged Meter Al's fist. What do you mean? You can call upon Shiva into your body since you are using his power. If you do, it will stop your body from becoming damaged and you will wield the true power of Shiva. Does that mean I will become a god? Yes. What will you do? I will take it. Meter Al kept on attacking Wujin, 
but he was still able to converse with Granny Mago while fighting. Good. Then I will also help you. Wu Jin then felt the sacred power within him seeping into his cells, changing him. He could feel that his body too was strengthening into the body of a god. That change also made his sword attack different. Meter all jumped back but his body was left with a long wound with blood gushing out. What did you just do? Chapter 160, Acquires Godliness, 2. Wu Jin knew that his body would not last forever anyway. It was as if a god had taken control of his body, but he knew he could only last for about 5 minutes. However, that was enough if he could fight in such a state. He also felt Granny Mago's spirit was now one with him and through that help. He now possessed Shiva's power within him. Wu Jin's sword now contained Shiva's destructive power, which pierced through Meter Al's defense. Meter Al's power was only limited by its range, it was better for Wu Jin to attack. He tried to go after the others, but Wu Jin did not let him. He attacked and Meter Al dodged, but in the process, he took even more damage. He was now taking more and more damage from Wu Jin's attacks. Meter Al then unleashed his power thinking that Wu Jin could not get away in time and would at least lose some part of his body like the others. However, as soon as he used the power, Wu Jin felt a chill. He was too close to get out of his range and in that split second, Wu Jin gripped his sword tight. And he trusted himself and swung. Meter All was powerful, but if his power of destruction worked, it would probably cut down that power as well. Wu Jin's sword, charged with the energy of destruction, cut Meter Al's power in half. His eyes opened in shock as Wu Jin charged in, swinging his sword. Meter Al threw his tentacle at Wu Jin, yet it couldn't even block him for a second as Wu Jin easily cut it down. Meter Al felt fear for the first time. He tried to jump back and run, but Wu Jin was too fast. Wu Jin's sword struck and cut off Meter Al's left arm and he unleashed his power hysterically. That was beyond Wu Jin's expectations. Everyone was only focused on giving Wu Jin energy and couldn't react to the power that appeared so suddenly. He especially targeted Imakami, who was the slowest of the group, resulting in the loss of her left shoulder. Kaya. A Mikami screamed as the others ran to check on her. She had been focused on giving power to Wu Jin, but now it was cut off. Meter Al acknowledged that his plan had worked. It was only part of it, but a Mikami's power gave him enough to complete his giant eye. He was now closer to his original form. Would his empowered attacks work against Wu Jin? Especially now with a Mikami's power gone, Meter Al activated his power, as the space in front of Wu Jin distorted. He again swung his sword and cut down the power. Meter Al was startled by that, but Wu Jin closed in and swung again. Meter Al now realized that Wu Jin was his archenemy, focusing on his powers. Wu Jin could cut each one down, but now he was unleashing it at a faster rate. As soon as Wu Jin won down, the power appeared from five different places. He could cut it down, but not five places at once. So, he turned and threw Mjolnir out. It was mainly just to draw Meter Al's attention. He had to dodge it and forget about controlling his power. Then, Wu Jin threw Guy Bulg at him. Guy Bulg had also changed. Meter Al's power was able to absorb weapons as well. It was not as efficient as absorbing pure energy, but he had to absorb it so that Wu Jin could not launch a ranged attack. When Meter Al used his power to absorb Guy Bulg, Wu Jin swung down his sword containing the power. He guessed that Meter Al could not use his power when his focus was elsewhere. Wu Jin's guess was right. Meter Al's chest was slashed and blood gushed out as he glared at him. At least he had absorbed Guy Bulg. When Wu Jin swung his sword again, Meter Al jumped back. But this time, Wu Jin couldn't catch up to him as he had gotten much faster. He now decided to focus on using his power while avoiding Wu Jin's attacks. Suddenly, the unexpected attacks were unleashed upon Meter All. Sun Wakong's Ru Ai Bang, Hemus's sword, Arthur's Excalibur, and Poseidon's Trident were all unleashed at the same time. If Meter All absorbed all of them, it would give Wu Jin a second to attack, and that would be enough for Wu Jin to finish him. Meter All realized he didn't have time to absorb all of those divine objects and dodged. It seemed that Wu Jin and the other gods were on a time limit so it was just a matter of time. And when Meter All dodged the incoming attack of weapons, 
a Mikami sent all of her power into Wujin and dropped. With the torrent of a Mikami's sacred power flowing into him, Wujin unleashed all his power into one movement. He disappeared as if he teleported and Meter Al fired off multiple layers to try to hit Wujin. Wujin struck down two layers, but three of them actually hit. Wujin's left leg and right thigh were cut, but he tilted his head to avoid the last layer getting just a scratch instead. Meter Al smiled victoriously, but Wujin slashed as he flew in. Meter Al absorbed Wujin's sacred power as his own, but Wujin's sword continued moving. Meter Al couldn't escape. He realized this was the final blow and unleashed his power. If his power couldn't defend against Wujin, he was going to die. Meter Al's power swept through Wujin's sword and his power of destruction and swallowed it. Only Meter Al was left. Wujin was gone. He had won. There were other gods left, but it didn't matter. Then, the space that swallowed Wujin was cut open and the sword was slashed at Meter Al. Chapter 161 Epilogue When Wujin was engulfed by Meter Al's power, he saw flashbacks of his life. The memory of him trying the best he could and yet eventually getting killed by Meter Al. Then, he came back to change everything. He remembered the ones that he met again in this life. Kim Bum, Bi Hyung, Lee Mayo, Mayo. After remembering her face, Woojin realized that if he were to disappear, the world would come to an end and everyone would die. He too felt that Meter Al was his ultimate enemy. Then, subconsciously Woojin swung his sword not realizing what he was doing. The sword swung and slashed the open space. Wujin saw Meter Al's face and immediately swung it again. He realized it wasn't him who was swinging his sword. The sword was a part of himself. He saw the sword slicing through, slashing Meter Al's large eye into two and the sword created by Wujin's mind flew in and cut Meter Al into pieces. Wujin was relieved. He heard Meter Al's screaming as he fell to the ground. But he didn't care. He couldn't care as his body was now falling apart. Sun Wukong ran to him and caught him as he fell. He sent his sacred power into Wujin, but the cracks did not decrease. They were the result of Wujin using power way beyond his limit. And Wujin's body was already beyond saving after being swallowed twice by Meter Al's power. That's when Mayo ran up to him at lightning speed and began healing him. However, Nothing worked. Wujin reached up and held Mayo's hand. That won't work. Do you want the syringe then? Wujin smiled wryly. He knew nothing would work to heal him anymore. Mayo's eyes were brimming with tears. Don't die. Wujin looked up at the sky where the barrier was still intact. At least we saved the world. Mayo bit her lip as Wujin reached out to stroke her cheek. Thanks. Don't say that. I need to return you to your avatar form. Wujin shook his head. We can maintain our avatar bodies but he can't. He has no place in the divine realm but he became a god in this place. He will perish here. Then we can send him up to the divine realm. Sun Wukong didn't answer and Himasu answered instead. He deserves a place in the divine realm, but people do not know this. We can't send him up until people know, but he will perish before that happens. That's not fair. Mayo shouted. But there was nothing they could do. Are you going to keep shouting? Let him go in peace. Sun Wukong got up and walked away and the other gods also followed. After they left, Mayo looked down at Wujin. He had a satisfied look, but that only made Mayo angry. What's with that look? Are you done with your work now? Wujin faced Mayo. She had an angry expression but her eyes were still filled with tears. It's a shame. What, if I survived this, I was going to ask you out. Mayo punched Wujin's chest lightly. Ugh. Wujin gasped as Mayo became worried and looked down. I'm sorry, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. She then noticed Wujin's body slowly turning into light particles and started sobbing. She knew it was time. She reached down and kissed him. Wujin then touched her face. Thank you. I was able to do this because of you. Me too. Mayo hugged him as his body turned into particles and floated up into the sky. Mayo cried silently as she watched the particles dissipate. Many jobs were created after the existence of avatars and monsters were known to the world. Science had also taken a huge step forward and there were many new laboratories set up for research. Companies also began investing in new fields, as people were adjusting to the new world. 
Ko Eun So got into college, she instantly became the darling of the school and was the most popular due to her beauty and her smarts. On her way to class, a sports car drove up next to Unso and stopped. A man got out of the car and spoke to her. Where are you going? Hello. It was a former student who recently joined the Top Hunter team Mir, who fell in love with Unso at first sight when she entered college. Going to class? Yeah. I have history class. Skip it. I'll buy you lunch. I'm sorry. I have an appointment today. The boy sighed at Unso's answer. Come on. You may not know this. But I'm a top class hunter. You know how hunters are in demand nowadays. And so couldn't answer that. She knew much more than just about hunters but wanted to live a life as normal as possible. She was determined to do that for her brother who had saved the world and perished without anyone knowing. Are you listening? The man got annoyed and came over to grab Unso's wrist. After joining the team Mir. No one around dared to go against him and he was getting irritated at Unso. It hurts. Unso frowned as she spoke, but the man felt pleasure in using force. So he tried to use more force, if not for someone who grabbed his wrist. Sungdi turned and saw a couple behind him. The man had sunglasses on, but he didn't look special. He was tall and had muscles. But it didn't seem like he would be a match for a top class hunter like him. All hunters with teams had the team emblems on their clothing but they didn't have any, meaning they were nothing. He tried to attack but saw an illusion of his wrist getting ripped off. Hi eek, he jumped back in shock. W who are you? I am Park Sung Day of Team Mir. Team Mir? The man glanced behind and the woman looked back at him as she shook her head and shrugged. I can't remember every hunter. Team Mir was one of the top 10 hunter teams in Korea, but being ignored made Sung Di angry. However, as he locked eyes with the man who looked over his sunglasses, Sung Di felt his energy leaving his legs. The man glared at Sung Di and threatened him. I don't care if you are Team Mir or Team Korea. If you bother run so again, I'll kill you. Hi Eek, I'm sorry. As Sung Di ran flailing on all of his arms and legs, the man turned to Unso. She started trembling as he took off his sunglasses. Woojin, Unso looked unconvinced and Woojin opened his arms wide and smiled. It's me, Woojin. Unso ran into his embrace as Mayo ranted. Do you have to be a sister to get a hug? Woojin hugged his sister tight. Unso sobbed in her brother's embrace for a good while before she looked up and said, I heard you were dead. Woojin smiled. He had become a god, but without anyone knowing what he did. He didn't think he would get accepted into the divine realm. Yet surprisingly, he was accepted and was able to create an avatar in just a year because of his overwhelming sacred energy. His avatar was incomplete as he rushed to finish it quickly, but his sacred power was so strong that he was still much more powerful than any other avatar. Woojin met with Mayo first. She cried so hard when she saw Woojin that she passed out. After she woke up, Woojin dragged her along to see his sister. Woojin patted Dunso's head. I was lucky enough to come back in a year. You're really back, right? Is this real? Yeah. Oh, and I am going to have a party at home. Do you need to go to class? No. Let's go home. A large mansion had been given to Woojin's family by Bahyung and the other avatars. His family did not want it. But Bahyung insisted that they take it. The giant yard was full of people since the early morning. Avatars from different regions had all gathered. Avatars were considered most highly and even more rarely seen than the president of each country. But none of them gave a reason for coming and started preparing the party. That's why Woojin's parents couldn't do anything but just watch and saw Unso coming back. Their eyes grew large when they saw the one following her into the house. Woojin's mother immediately ran up to him and touched his cheek. Are you really my son? Yeah. Mom, Dad, I'm back. Bahyung told me you were dead. Bahyung was drinking from behind when he heard his name mentioned and answered. I didn't lie. What happened? Woojin smiled. Yeah, I died. But I'm back. His parents' eyes grew wide with shock. It was something hard to believe, even in such a changed world. Does it matter? I'm back. No, it doesn't. His mother hugged Woojin. Son Wakong, who was looking at Woojin, commented as he puffed on his pipe. I've never seen such a god before. What do you mean?
A Makami asked as Sun Wakong tapped on his pipe and replied, A god who comes down with such an incomplete avatar just to meet his family, a Makami agreed. She turned to Wu Jin. Considering Wu Jin's sacred power, that level of avatar was absurd. But Wu Jin came back anyway. It doesn't matter if that is what he values the most. Wu Jin smiled brightly with his entire family in his arms. End.